Derek Stroop. Those blue eyes. Hey, 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 how y'all doing? I am doing fantastic, sir. How are you? I am great, man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, dude, it's my uh, it's my pleasure. A couple of things as we get going. Number one, I will tell you this. A couple of friends of mine within, I don't know, probably the last six months or so have seen you uh, live doing stand up. And, dude, they won't shut up about how good you are. Oh, man. Well, that's the coolest thing ever to hear. I appreciate you telling me that. And then the second thing I want to tell you is your record is fantastic. <laughs> my, my record? Well, you know what it, the 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 special, the audio special. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the album. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Hey, can I can I? Yeah, ask- eating dinner twice, man. That I got that. I'm with Larry the Cable Guy. His Get Her Done record label. It's the coolest thing ever. Okay, so two things about that. Is it is it a little tr- non traditional? Like, because you feel like like with 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 comedy, right? I feel like we've gotten so used to it being. You know, comedy special that that you watch that you don't listen to. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just seems a little non traditional to me. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's something that people aren't doing much anymore, which I found the you know, which kind of intrigued me. Um, and I loved comedy albums growing up. That's kind of what I, you know, specials were were rare. Seeing the person do the hour, you'd be more likely to listen to it. And uh, and I really uh, I like I liked the idea of that and, and jumped on the opportunity and it's, and it's been cool the feedback's been great. I also didn't know that Larry the Cable Guy had a uh, <laughs> record uh, like a record company. Yeah, I mean uh, I didn't know until we spoke until we spoke about it and I mean he's got some he's got some other great comics on there too and I mean his platform is is huge and so it's yeah been really cool that he's taken me under his wing it's it, it's helped me a lot hey Derek can I ask you this like you said like uh like like early on when you were young like that is and and you're right like that is you you had comedy records or or comedy albums that you would listen to obviously back then it was on vinyl but now like mm-hmm. yours eating dinner twice now it's iTunes it's Spotify it's Apple Music yep. Amazon uh YouTube all of that and that's great accessibility is so much easier but what mm-hmm. what what comedy records were you listening to when you were a kid? Man, I really go all the way back to like George Carlin, Richard Pryor, some of the stuff back in the late '80s, early '90s that my dad would have laying around the house. Uh, I would listen to, and even like some really country stuff. Like there was even some Rodney Carrington uh, laying around. He had some uh, albums back in the '90s that my dad had as well. So, and, you know, I would he'd just be sitting in the living room, you know, and he'd just be listening to them. And it was a really cool experience. And you would just kind of visualize the act out and what it looked like. And you could kind of have your own imagination to go along with the jokes and the stories. And, uh, and it's a cool thing. And also, like you said, accessibility is huge. Tons of people are on Spotify and looking for things to put in their ears. And so that was also a fun angle to try to take. Hey, so when you were when you were listening to those records and they they're your dad's, you're from Harvest, Alabama, which uh Derek, fill in the blank, that is a population of Uh that's gonna be about thirty seven hundred now. Oh my god. Oh now, oh, now oh, what was left. it what was it back in the heyday? <laughs> Man, when I was I'm thirty nine. When I was growing up, it was probably you know, it was probably closer to like nineteen hundred, two thousand. It's it's more like a community <laughs> outside of Huntsville, Alabama. And, you know, Harvest, Alabama, that's like, I mean, that, that sounds made up. That's a little, that's like being from Tornado, Oklahoma or something. That's like <laughs> very accurate sounding, you know? <laughs> but can a, can a kid living in, well, I mean, the answer is yes, because we've seen it happen. But when you're a kid living in Harvest and it's it's a community of, of 2,000 people and, like, your dad's comedy records are around, like, do you do you allow yourself to dream of, like, one day I'll be... You know, I, listen. I'm. I love the record, and I think it's great. I'm not ready to put you up there with Richard Pryor yet, but like, do you? Yeah, for sure. Do you allow yourself to 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 dream of like I'm going to do that? Like, it just seems like being in Harvest that yes, you can hear the records. But where was the closest comedy shop? I guess Huntsville. Yeah, it would be Huntsville, but Huntsville didn't even really, you know, have comedy. No, it never. It wasn't a dream. Uh, of mine as a kid because that just didn't seem accessible uh, where I lived and not like in a sad, oppressed way, just in the thing. It just never really 
crossed my mind. You know, being from where I'm from, it's a really unique area. Huntsville is the home of, uh, you know, that we've got a lot of NASA there, the Redstone Arsenal. Uh, a lot of people don't know how smart they are. Like, half my friend's parents were cotton farmers, and the other half were literal rocket scientists. The demographic there was really interesting. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, I didn't really dream of that so much. Uh, you know, I mean, if somebody would have told my mom that I was going to be a comedian when I was a kid, it would have helped her a lot. Um, <laughs> because she, 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 couldn't, she couldn't figure out what, what was going on. I mean, um, so yeah, I didn't, it's not something, you know, I had different layers. I thought I was going to be a preacher at one point and then, you know, you, you, you find out that's not really your route. And so, yeah, it, it, it wasn't something I dreamed of, but it, so it makes it even more surreal to be honest with you. Hey, so at what point, Derek, did you pick up and move to, like, I know you've been there for, I, I want to say like about a decade, but what, what, what made the move to Denver? You know, I, I, I really, it was, it was time to go. I'd, I'd been doing comedy in Alabama for three years without a scene or like an open mic. I was just, I ran a bar and I would get up about every three months and do like 30 to 40 minutes just cause I mean, there was like music every night. And if I heard wagon wheel one more time, I was going to jump out a window. So <laughs> I, I, I decided that I was just going to tell some jokes and that just kind of built over the years. And, and then that dream did start to happen because, I, I, you know, it felt more of like a reality when I was holding the microphone and people were seeming to enjoy it. And so and Denver seemed like a place where I wasn't going to be swallowed alive. L.A. and New York and those normal cities that people go to um, seemed overwhelming um, to me. So uh, I wanted to go somewhere where I could kind of, you know, get used to it and not be swallowed. By the way, and you picked the perfect spot go, going back to the uh, going back to the uh, record eating dinner twice. Dude, I could listen to you talk about the crunchy hippies <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah, man. A different world, man. They're just a different version of white people than I grew up with, you know? <laughs> and it's just, uh, it's fun. It's fun to talk about it. You know, it is. And, and it's fun that I made these bits talking about it to their face. Um, <laughs> you know, so, you know, like that Carhartt bit that I do. Sure. I, it almost... It, I almost got to that too early because I'm in like, I'm at ground zero for hipsters. So, you know, I literally walked outside one day and everybody was dressed like chicken farmers that worked <laughs> remotely. And I was like, this is insane. And, but the rest of the country hadn't really seen it yet. You know, that was three or four years ago. Uh, so it's been really interesting living in such a hipster place and being where I'm from. The perspectives are so contrasting that it's made for some fun writing. Um, I'm still wearing long sleeve champion t-shirts. Oh yeah. Champion. Now that's, th that is, uh, white on trash, where, you know, white where trash, Derek. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, I, in the nineties, it was for sure. You know, I mean, back in the day, it became Kmart's flagship brand and none of us wanted to wear it. But, uh, now, you know, now it's, I mean, it's a very popular brand. I mean, I'm sure uh, Champion's just as shocked as I am. <laughs> there's no, there's no way they saw this coming. I like, I'd like to think one day they woke up and they were like, "There are these people in Brooklyn that are wearing our stuff." Like, I mean, there's no way they saw this coming. You know what line really made me laugh, and and I hope this doesn't upset you because of all the material on there. But nobody, no. nobody needs lotion like Tammy's heels. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, man. That Tammy bit. Uh, that's a fun one. That that comes from a real person. So yeah, <laughs> we all know. We all know Tammy. <laughs> and that was followed by when you're talking about like again, just like being out in Denver and all the hipsters, and you talk about uh, you you do the whole bit about like hiking. And why it's why why it's a bad date and on and on. I do like where you go. Say Andrew, save some sex for us, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talking about the guy with the shin high socks and cargo shorts on. Yeah, save some sex for us, big dog. You're out here. Uh, hey, now is eighty five SPF on your nose? <laughs> yeah. Is 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 Alyssa from? Is your girlfriend from Denver or from Alabama? 
Oh, she's actually uh, from Kansas. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got. She's from a little town in uh, in uh, Kansas, uh, Iola, Kansas. So, yeah. I mean, she's from a town smaller than where I'm from. I mean, I never thought that I could have that happen. But we went and visited, you know, uh, where she's from, and I mean, they they don't even use phones. They just yell at each other. They're, <laughs> they're, there's, you know, you can just yell to your neighbor. They're close enough. Now, where was the where was the meeting? Like, where was the where was the connection between you two? We met in Denver. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ended up uh, meeting here, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, invited her to a comedy show as as soon as I could. I knew that, you know, I wasn't going to get her with looks. I needed to tell her that I had a few zingers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and is the is the story true? That the for for you two are engaged, right? Is the yeah we are. Is the story true that you bought the ring eight months before you got engaged? Yeah, that's a hundred percent true. Yeah, I love that. And and just in in talking about how uh, you know you need to you need to have a little accountability. You know, I didn't have a proposal date set yet, so everything's kind of hanging in the balance. And the jokes about how. We'd be in the kitchen, and she'd get a little sarcastic, and I'd be like, "Not tonight, for sure." You know, <laughs> uh, where you 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 want a summer wedding? You got a fall attitude. You, know? <laughs> you got to nail something down. Yeah, the uh, the men laugh harder at that joke than the women do. I can tell you that much. And by the way, what was I reading? You posted something online, Derek. What was I reading? Like it was, it was obviously while you were while, while you were on the road and, and traveling around. What is the thing that you snuck into Camden Yards in Baltimore for? Oh, it was. Uh, that's funny. You saw that. That's. Uh, it was some type of uh, uh, golf event that they were having in there. And uh, yeah, man, we just played it cool and walked behind a few ropes. And before I knew it. I was swinging a nine iron onto the infield. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm going to tell you something. We're standing there in line, and these guys next to us, they're like, "Man, this, this event was sold out. Uh, it sold out in ten minutes." And they go, uh, "We we could only get two tickets. We tried to get four. They go, "How'd it go for y'all?" And I was with uh, uh, John Christ, and I looked at him. We looked at him, told him we were like. We uh we just walked behind that open gate down there, and these guys turned white. I mean, they didn't think it was funny. They didn't like it. They hated us. We were the two people that probably took the spots that they needed. But yeah, it uh it was a fun afternoon to get to walk around Camden and for free. What a beautiful place that was. But you're right. The picture of you like in like some like up in one of like the mid sections with like a little patch of like uh, astroturf. Clucking balls into the field is hysterical. Oh, it was the it was the most random afternoon. I had just got done just pounding crabs heads in with a mallet just fifteen <laughs> minutes before, and then just walked onto the. I mean, we we were just going to take a picture outside of the stadium, and then we were like, I think they're hitting golf balls. And then, you know, if you uh, if you look confident enough, and uh, you know, have have dark enough sunglasses on you just cruise in <laughs> well listen dude uh eating dinner twice it's out and available now it's streaming on itunes spotify apple music amazon music youtube derek like i said i know uh, a couple of people that have seen you out on the road in the last six months um the record is great i appreciate the time my friend hey thanks for having me i really appreciate y'all and have a great day hey you do the same thanks derek